back to the Scarlet Faithful Podcast. Happy Monday. Bye week is over for Rutgers football. Let's review the results of week three in the Big Ten and then talk about week four ahead. Obviously, a huge week for Rutgers football at Virginia Tech. First, just in terms of the high-profile matchup for the Big Ten in week three, Wisconsin did not do well at all uh, against Alabama at home. Tyler Van Dyke getting hurt early on in that game. Uh, they had a field goal. They were up 3 nothing. He had a knee, apparent knee injury. I uh, haven't seen any full reports on his prognosis or his timeline, but obviously something to watch for as a Rutgers fan with Wisconsin coming to the Scataway the second week of October. Uh, but overall, Alabama dominated 42-10. to Oregon dominated the Civil War against Oregon State with a 49-14 victory. Gabriel with uh, almost 300 yards, two touchdowns. James ran for two touchdowns as well. They're now 3-0, and and that was a dominant road performance for them. After a little bit of a scare the week before, you had Michigan bounce back. Not really that impressively, but they beat Arkansas State at home 28-18. Of course, Rutgers not playing Michigan when they look pretty vulnerable this year, but that's for another story. Notre Dame bounces back after the loss to Northern Illinois by thumping Purdue in West Lafayette 66 to 7. That was a bloodbath. Uh, again, Rutgers not playing Purdue as well. Nebraska, uh, pretty ho hum victory at home against Northern Iowa, uh, 34 to 3. They're now rolling 3 and 0, and we'll talk about them in a minute because they open Big Ten play with a big Friday night game. This week, Rutgers approaching in a few weeks now. Uh, that could line up to be a monster matchup in the Big Ten. Uh, Illinois continued to roll, beat MAC team Central Michigan 30 to 9. Michigan State 40 to nothing over Prairie View. AM, Minnesota, a shutout over Nevada. They're now 2 and 1, uh, 27 to nothing in that win. Uh, Brosmer, their quarterback, threw another pick, 191 yards, touchdown. Uh, fans still. Clamoring for the days of Ethan Kelly McManus. We'll see, but that would be a big matchup early November. But after that loss to North Carolina, a lot of fans were not happy. Uh, Washington State beats Washington, uh, which was, you know, a little bit. I don't know if you call it an upset or not. Washington State's 3 0 now. Huskies, tough rivalry loss against their former Pac 12 foe. And obviously, for Rutgers' perspective, that is very interesting because they will not be undefeated when they come to Piscataway. Scattaway the following week. Uh, Washington now uh, with wins over Weber State and Eastern Michigan. They do play Northwestern this weekend at night at home. Uh, and then they'll obviously travel to Piscataway on short rest. So uh, that was, you know, a disappointing loss from a Rutgers perspective because you wanted a little more hype for that game, similarly to how Virginia Tech lost at Vandy. But hey, you play the games, you play the schedule that's in front of you. And if you're a Rutgers fan right now, you have to be excited because the possibility of getting through September undefeated based on how Washington and Virginia Tech have looked. I mean, there's a real chance here. So we'll get to what has to happen and for, for that to occur. But uh, disappointment that those teams won't be undefeated when Rutgers faces them. But at the same time, should lead to more optimism that Rutgers can take care of business here and win both those games. Uh, Iowa beat Troy 38-21, to a uh, little bit of a tighter game than they thought. It was a three-point game going into the fourth quarter. They scored two fourth-quarter touchdowns. Uh, and then Caleb Johnson's one of the best running backs in the country, 173 yards, two touchdowns. Indiana goes to the Rose Bowl and destroys UCLA, who looks really bad, 42-13. to They jumped out to 14-0 lead, 21-0 uh, lead, and uh, just never was, never was a game. Uh, their quarterback Rourke had four touchdown passes and uh, Indiana's looking better. So uh, with Kirk Signetti as coach, Rutgers does not have them this year. They do have UCLA at home for homecoming. So that prospect is looking even more promising. And then you had Northwestern beat Eastern Illinois at home 31 to seven and Maryland went on the road and beat Virginia 27 to 13. They were trailing early in that game, bounced back. Uh, the new quarterback, Edwards Jr., had two touchdown passes, almost 300 yards. So Maryland uh, bouncing back after a disappointing loss the week before to Michigan State. And that was the action in the Big Ten. A lot of high-profile teams were on buys last week. And now we move to week four. Things are really starting to get interesting now. Four Big Ten games will take place, uh, as well as four uh, compelling 
power four matchups in non-conference play before the Big Ten play begins in earnest the following week. Uh, so let's start with the Friday night action. Uh, Illinois at Nebraska on Fox, 8 p.m. Friday, September 20th. Both teams are now ranked. Illinois is 24. Nebraska is 22. Illinois has that big win at home against Kansas, although Kansas then lost to UNLV at home. So maybe that isn't as impressive as a win. We'll see. But Nebraska thumped uh, Colorado earlier. And, uh, you know, Dylan Rayola looks like the real deal. He's thrown for uh, almost 700 yards, five touchdowns, and an interception so far. Uh, so really good start to his career. And uh, in terms of that matchup, I mean, that is Big Ten football. And that's going to be a very uh, interesting matchup. But also in terms of the implications of the overall standings. I mean, if Nebraska wants to have the year they want to have, they got to win that game at home. And Illinois, you know, uh, kind of exceeding expectations early, I'd say. Uh, so for Brett Belima, so that would be an interesting game. I think from a Rutgers perspective, you want to see Nebraska win it. So that matchup in two weeks is potentially between two unbeaten teams. Uh, but we'll see what happens there. Ohio State hosts Marshall uh, at home. That should be, uh, you know, rather easy for them. Indiana hosts Charlotte at home, coming back from that big uh, win at UCLA. Uh, and then uh, Penn State hosts Kent State, who's 0-3, struggling early. Penn State coming off a bye. Uh, then USC opening Big Ten play in the big house at Michigan. Michigan 2-1, and one, USC coming off a bye as well. Uh, USC is looking good. Michigan has struggled. So that's a big test for them. USC is ranked number 11 right now. Michigan's ranked 18th. Uh, so that is certainly a lot of implications in that matchup. Uh, and then in terms of UCLA, not looking good. And they are going to Baton Rouge, Louisiana to play number 16, LSU, who escaped. I watched a little bit of that game, the South Carolina game. South Carolina really got hosed on a uh, bad call late that changed momentum in that game. And uh, But LSU is, uh, you know... 22 and a half point favorites against UCLA. That could get ugly uh, there and uh, certainly not probably an opportunity for the Big Ten to get a big non-conference win. Uh, and then in terms of the uh, conference games, uh, in addition to uh, Illinois, Nebraska, you have uh, Northwestern at Washington. So the Huskies looking to bounce back. Northwestern has the loss to Duke. Washington coming off the loss to Washington State. Then you have Iowa at Minnesota. That will be an interesting one. Washington, by the way, 10.5 point favorites against Northwestern. Iowa, favorites on the road at Minnesota. And then, of course, Michigan State going to Boston College for the Red Bandana game. Of course, uh, in honoring, honoring Wells Crowther, the uh, BC alum who uh, saved so many lives on 9 11 uh, so long ago. They play that game every year. So that's going to be a really tough environment Saturday night for Michigan State, who is 3 0 uh, in Jonathan Smith's first year. Quarterback, five interceptions so far. Uh, that can't do that on the road, uh, but a uh, one of two uh, interesting ACC Big Ten matchups on Saturday. But before I get to the Rutgers, Purdue will be at Oregon State in Corvallis. Uh, Oregon State coming off of that loss to Oregon, and then Purdue coming off that uh, really bad loss to Notre Dame. But a chance for the Big Ten to get a good con- non-conference win there. Uh, and then obviously Rutgers on the road at Virginia Tech and. Virginia Tech was on the road last week at Old Dominion, and it wasn't uh, a route by any means. But uh, you know they gave up. Let's see, what was that final score? It was uh, it was it was a relatively close game for a little bit. Uh, it was 37-17 was the final score, 14 to 10 at the half. Then came out in the second half, kicked a couple of field goals in that third quarter, stretched the lead, and then Tootin kind of took over on the ground uh, and ran that game out of uh, out of contention for Old Dominion uh, and. The Hokies lost to Old Dominion a few years ago. So Virginia Tech's look just okay, right? And uh, But they have Kyron Jones, who's a great quarterback, I think, uh, and a dual threat. And we know Rutgers fans, we always get nervous when Rutgers defense has to face a dual threat. I do think the linebackers in this uh, game, I talked about this a little bit with David Anderson in our uh, bye week uh, kind of breakdown of the position groups came out on Saturday. If you didn't see that, check it out. Uh, But just in terms of the linebackers, in terms of, uh, you know, situational awareness, uh, play calling, uh, communication on the field, I feel like with a quarterback like Drones, that's essential. And Powell could play. Uh, We don't know. He was, you know, questionable on the last availability report. Uh, Shiana will meet with the media on Monday, but I doubt he'll tip his hand there. 
Uh, we won't really know till game time. Uh, but I think it's that experience, right? I think with Jabomi, uh, with Moses Walker, with Abram Wright, uh, hence better. It, it, it's about, it's not that they're not talented. It's not that they're not capable of performing. It's being in a big game situation, going against an offense that's going to do different things now in a P4 matchup the rest of the way here. So it's a big spot. And I think it's really going to, the linebackers is going to really impact the ability for the Rutgers defense to have the game that they need to have for Rutgers to go into Blacksburg and win the game. Of course, you have Kyle Manungai, and whenever you have Kyle Manungai, you got to feel good about your chances. And Virginia Tech run defense is a bit of a mess. Uh, they have not been good yet again. Uh, David Anderson talked a lot about last year about their inability to uh, kind of take the right angles in the run game, their linebacking crew, and just you know struggling to limit uh, teams have big runs. And last week, let's see, yeah, Old Dominion ran for 243 yards, averaged 6.2 yards per carry. That is certainly encouraging for Rutgers going into Blacksburg. Uh, but, you know, Ethan Calic Manis is going to have to make some throws. It's going to be an interesting game. We'll get more into it as the week goes on. Plenty of coverage here at the Scarlet Faithful Podcast. But in terms of week three, uh, not a ton of surprises in the Big Ten. And now week four. Uh, it's really going to be interesting. And for Rutgers, here we go. This is a six-week stretch where the season ceiling is going to be defined. Uh, and will they have an opportunity to make it a truly special season in November? Or is it about having a good season? Which, listen, with the years we've been through, uh, either of those is a great scenario uh, and better than the alternative. So we'll see what happens. But exciting times here on the Banks. And thanks so much for listening here once again at the Scarlet Faithful Podcast. I'll talk to you tomorrow.